It's springtime, it's beautiful out, the sun is shining, the days are longer, and more than ever before, I can see the dust bunnies I've been ignoring for months. <laughs> Hello friends, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Lindsay. More than anything, I want to inspire you to think differently and try something new in your home to create a space you truly love. Until next time, I challenge you to find one thing you can do to improve your space this week. Good luck everyone. And in today's video, we're sharing 10 very intriguing, cheap and easy ways to refresh your home this spring. Let's get right into the first tip. It might sound super basic, but cut off, get rid of those tags and stickers when you buy something in Target or even when you're vintage shopping. Sometimes we get a little complacent. We might forget to take off the important little price tags and stickers, those warning signals on the cord of a new lamp. You, I think, can handle the responsibility of plugging in a lamp and not pouring a glass of water on it. So I think you're totally okay to remove those tags. It'll just take a second. It's totally free and it's instantly going to elevate your items, make them feel a little bit more fresh, maybe make somebody wonder if it's vintage or new. So just go ahead, rip off the band-aid, so to speak, and chop off those little tags. You don't need them. Next, hang and hem your curtains the right way. You might already have beautiful drapery curtains in your space, but just slightly adjusting the way you've hung them might make your space feel bigger and more expansive and let more light into your home. So here's how to do it. First off, hang your curtain rod about two to three inches from the ceiling, within reason, of course. If you have cathedral ceilings, you might want to adjust that slightly. But in a typical home with kind of typical height ceilings, 9, 10, 12, you're definitely going to want to hang them higher than the window, a lot higher, to make the window and the whole room feel taller. Next, you're going to want to hang your curtain rod brackets wider than your window. That's going to make the window seem larger, more expansive. And when you open the drapes, it'll let a lot more light in while still giving you that space on the sides of the window to kind of zhuzh and play with the hanging drapery curtain. I just love to make sure they're perfectly beautifully, you know, kind of separated. Each little fold looks really good in the light. So give it a shot hang them wider, hang them higher. Next up, the hemming. Let's not forget about the hemming because that's super important. And I'm gonna call you out right here. You know, you just went off to Target. You bought the easiest, already hemmed, closest <laughs> length of curtain that you could find for your space. And now you've got maybe some high water drapes. You know, like when somebody has like weird short pants, are they ready for a flood, so to speak? Oh my gosh, Lindsay, I'm literally pulling out jokes from my grandmother's childhood right now, but that's how much I care about your hem on your curtain. So you can either do it, you can use an iron-on transfer tape. I've done that before. I did a ton of curtains in our rental home office and I used all iron-on tape to do it. It was so easy. But now that we're in our new home, I really do like to go all the way, pull out the sewing machine and really put a beautiful, perfect custom hem on my curtain. Now, if you're not somebody who's into sewing and maybe you don't even want to DIY, I mean, gosh, some people are as allergic to DIY as they are to anything else in the world. So if that's you, don't forget your local dry cleaner. Your local dry cleaner can usually, for a very minimal fee, hem curtains and do it fast. They're so used to turning out quick alterations on clothes on the regular. So they've got the full setup, the big industrial sewing machines. They can hem long items, whereas at home, even if you are a sewer, it might be a little challenging to wrangle all that fast fabric if you're not used to using, you know, drapery fabrics. Don't cheap out on the hem. Don't have high water drapes. Don't have this long puddling, dust collecting, too long of drapes either. Just make a plan, take a Saturday, do it yourself, knock it out, either the easy or the more challenging way, or just drop them off at your dry cleaners with the measurements and you'll have them done and back and that custom look on a budget Oh my gosh, you will be so pleased with the massive change this is gonna make in your space. Seriously, go do this. <laughs> Next up, another super free and cheap and easy one, prune your plants. Edit your plants, make sure you don't have too many. Look at your design style goals, think about it. Do you have way too many plants or do you need to kind of pare down? If you wanna add a couple of new plants, be really considerate about the lighting situation, what 
real time and energy you have to take care of plants. And if you're like me and you have a lot of plants around your home, it might be time in the spring to do a little bit of pruning. We love this app called Planta. It is super easy to use. You just take a picture or search each plant in your home. You label it with the lighting conditions, where it's located in your house, and then it will set up a schedule of water and maintenance for you for misting, for watering your plants. It is so easy. And it'll also kind of give you some 911 rehab ideas for your plant if your plant is having a little bit of a moment. Some of our plants are maybe got fried in the sun on too sunny of days in the window or maybe was too cold. And they have kind of drooped a little bit. I'm definitely in that springtime zone of just editing plants around our house. I'm looking at each one, kind of moving some to different locations for better sunlight or just better aesthetics. Uh, and I'm also doing a ton of pruning. Take a look at this beautiful leafy plant that we got at Costco recently. I just love this plant, but you can see the backside of it wasn't getting enough sunlight in its previous location in front of the fireplace. So I'm just going in, I'm clipping a few of these dead leaves. Most plants, when you have leaves that are starting to turn and wither, the plant is going to start pushing a lot of resources at that dying leaf to the detriment of the rest of the plant. That's why sometimes you'll see it's like a whole half of a plant will start to suffer based on just a couple of leaves that started to turn. If you catch them quickly, most plants, if you cut them at the base or deadhead them, then they'll be able to regrow and you won't have that sort of unsightly dead appearance. Definitely a great time. The sun is coming out more. Get those scissors. Don't be afraid. Use that Planta app. I can't recommend it highly enough. Not sponsored at all. I just love the company and that particular app will help you to make a plan for your plants and make it hopefully feel less daunting. Something you can set up that you can do each day or every other day at your convenience. I know it's not decorating, but this always makes my house feel more refreshed organize one drawer. Of course, it would be great if you could, you know, magically do all the drawers, but if you can only tackle a couple, if you just mentally can't handle organizing, try to tackle just one drawer. One drawer that you use a lot and that maybe is causing you some stress. For me, that was our junk drawer off the side of the kitchen. Into our dining room. It's a nice size room. It looks a little small here maybe, but it's a good size once you're standing in it. It's this super weird cabinet that they use to fill in this corner area between our kitchen and the dining room. It opens into the dining room and it's just kind of a weird placement. It just became kind of a dumping ground for whatever we didn't know what to do with or, you know, just lists or pens or tickets or whatever. And so I just went ahead at Home Goods recently after an appointment, I ran over to Home Goods, grabbed a couple of super inexpensive acrylic organizers. They have a ton of different sizes at Home Goods pretty much all the time. So year round, anytime you want to do some organizing, just pop down there and grab a few. The nice thing about getting it at Home Goods is you can look at your measurements in your drawer and then go down to the store and find something that fits right now and get it today. Another great option, of course, is to look for acrylic organizers for your drawers on Amazon. Once you put them in, you can really start to hopefully purge a lot of junk that you're just not using and really utilize these sort of individual compartments of the organizer to help you put like things together and eliminate the clutter. I know just doing this one drawer made such a huge difference for me. Every time I open it, I just feel joyous. And I feel like every time one of us gets into that drawer, we always put things back in the right place now. Whereas before I felt like I was like digging around in there like a squirrel to find anything. Totally ridiculous waste of time if you ask me. Desk drawers, kitchen drawers. Gosh, if you have drawers in your pantry or closet, if you have an accessory drawer in your closet, there's all types of different jewelry organizers and all kinds of things. If you're looking for something specific, even if you have a collection of like watches or, you know, whatever, you can probably find an organizer for it. If you search on Amazon, or even if you want to go a little upscale, you can head on over to the container store. My biggest advice is measure the drawer, measure the closet, whatever you're getting storage pieces for, and try not to overbuy storage pieces. Don't just get on a wild hair and be like, I'm going to organize and then go down a container store and spend like a thousand dollars on stuff and then come home and realize it doesn't even fit in the closet. Like that is such a waste of money. And if you're like most people, if you do that, you're just going to have a pile of organizing stuff. And then you're going to be too, maybe I'm just talking about myself here, lazy to drive it all the way back across town to return it. Just do yourself a favor, measure first, measure twice, order it online or go in person, but make sure if you're buying stuff that it fits. 
you can tell I'm passionate about this. <laughs> You can tell I do love an organized drawer. It does bring me a great amount of joy. And you know, if that's not your joyous thing, then just, you know, zip along to the next tip. <laughs> Apologies if I've said this one a million times, but it's one of my all time favorite tips. Rehang your artwork. If you want your space to have a brand new, fresh feeling, my best advice is take down all the artwork that you have, especially if you're like me, if you're a little bit of an art collector, take all of it out all of it physically out of the room, move it away. Just see the room just with the bare bones, the furniture and the area rug, hopefully the drapes. And then think about other pieces that you have in your home. Maybe you can do a little bit of a swap between your living room and your bedroom, for example. Maybe you can switch a piece from your den into your living room. Maybe you can swap out small pieces from your kitchen with pieces from your bathroom. If you have a universal color palette in your home like we do, I highly recommend it. It makes sense. If you buy something, it beautifully, cohesively fits into your cohesive design plan, and then you you can easily transfer artwork in between different spaces for a totally new vibe. I love to collect some pieces that have dark undertones like this landscape piece in my office. I also love to collect beautiful light and bright pieces like this totally white textural piece. And it's interesting to play with light and dark, moving things around in different times of the year, different seasons, and it can really just brighten a space or give it that deep, dark, moody vibe if that's what you're going for. You can really see your art collection in a totally new new way. It can feel like a brand new piece of art to your home if you just take it away from that place where it's always hung and just bring new attention to it in a new place. I highly, highly recommend it. I can't say it enough. If you move a piece, let me know down in the comments. Let me know, did it change your mind about that piece? Did it help you appreciate something that felt old? Did it make it feel new again? Oh, I just want to hear your success stories. So let me know. <laughs> I know I'm going to mess up this quote, but before leaving the house, you should take one thing off. Meaning that if you're accessorizing an outfit and you have an arm full of bracelets and a big chunky necklace and a hat and gloves and a beautiful giant coat and a lot of detail on your dress, it might just be a lot of busyness without direction. The same thing applies in homes, I find. So one thing that I especially in springtime love to do is clear the decks by removing one piece from a room. Maybe that's one extra lamp or one extra art piece. Maybe it's one plant or maybe one styling piece. One one pillow off of the sofa, one ottoman. Maybe it's moving a whole chair or a small table out of a room just to make the space feel larger and like you can move around in it more. So give it a shot, test this one out, see if it helps you, especially if you're prone to over styling. We all can, especially if we go to Home Goods or go to the thrift shop and find a billion cute little cool items to style with. Maybe paring down and taking out one piece might change everything and make it feel a little bit more clicked together, a little bit more designed designer, a little bit more intentional, which is a little bit of negative space. You knew I was going to say it because it's totally free rearrange your furniture. I'm the queen of rearranging furniture. I can't go into a hotel room, a friend's apartment, or watch any television show without immediately thinking about the space planning of a room. I love to rearrange furniture ever since I was a little girl. When I was growing up, my mother was an interior designer. She taught me so much about the fundamentals of design, and she used to take me along with her on jobs when I was young and let me kind of play around with furniture arrangement. It has really become a real passion for me. I love finding the right pieces for a space, but more than anything, I just like to shop my own home, move things from space to space from time to time if that makes sense. <laughs> just see things in a new way. And you guys, the new area rug for the living room is here. We finally got some construction progress, pretty progress in the den that I can't wait to show you. I have big plans for a little quick redesign of our guest bedroom. Ah, so make sure you hit that little notification bell so you don't miss a single upload. So I've done that pretty much in every place I've ever lived in. I lived in a studio apartment for about five, six years. And when I lived there, I I rearranged the furniture no less than 7,500 times probably. I mean, every possible arrangement I think I explored. Even though we live in a bigger place now, I'm definitely not in a studio these days. We live in a three bedroom house. I love to go room by room as I'm sort of figuring out each style of each space and just play with the furniture arrangement. I took a whole day on our primary bedroom after painting the walls to just try out literally every possible option for the furniture until I realized exactly what was going to work best. My best advice for doing this without getting yourself totally 
exhausted and frustrated is to sketch out plans first. Sketch out a basic idea of what your room looks like, where doors are, windows are, any vents or outlets, anything that you know is going to impact where you put things. Just sketch many different versions of it. I would sketch at least four or five different options, all the options you can think of. Seriously, even if you think it won't work, just sketch it. Seriously, what are you gonna lose? Just sketch it. Then you can look at all of the options, weigh the pros and cons, and then decide what you wanna go for your first option. When you arrange furniture, keep in mind that you're probably not gonna like it at first. It's gonna feel weird, it's gonna feel different. You were used to your bed on that side of the room, and I don't know about it on this side of the room. It's good to just play with it, you know, move things slightly, move it a few inches. Can you live without two tables here? Do you really need this chair in this room? And just keep kind of moving things around until it feels good. If you're having a hard time, if you're really not sure, sleep on it. Why not? Just, you know, get to a place where you're like, okay, I'm interested to see if I'm going to like this going forward. I'm just going to, you know, go to bed, look at it with fresh eyes, fresh, beautiful light in the morning, hopefully it's not raining. And then you can really analyze it and try some others before you go for your final furniture arrangement. The nice thing about furniture arrangement is you can redo it literally any time that you can find the time. So if you don't like it in a week, awesome. Move it in the other way, but then at least you know you've tried and you won't be wondering forever. <laughs> I find that when I get an idea in my head, I'm just like a dog with a bone sometimes. I just cannot think about anything else until I try it. Maybe that's just me, but I am just a big, big believer in experimenting. Design like other creative endeavors is totally subjective and you can't really find out what you like until you try all the options. Sketch a lots of options ahead of time and be willing to try every option, fail a lot, fail splendidly until you find the perfect arrangement. Make sure to take away all styling and all small furniture first before you start rearranging the foundation, which is your largest pieces of furniture. Then start layering in the small pieces, then start layering in some artwork leaned up against the wall, and then you'll get the vibe and see if it's for you. This is one of those where about half this audience is gonna be like, duh, Lindsay, we do that regularly and half this audience is going to be like, oh shoot, <laughs> when, when have I ever done this? clean your textiles. I'm not talking about your towels. Of course, I hope you're laundering your towels. I'm talking about the textiles that you use all the time that never get any love from you, <laughs> like your draperies. If you only clean your draperies once a year, do it in early spring. The days are longer, the sun is pouring in, you can see all those dust bunnies as I mentioned. Your drapery might look just a little dingy from a year of sitting there collecting dust. Take that set of drapery down, take it to the laundry, take it to the dry cleaner, wash it yourself. Just check, of course, all of the care instructions for your specific fabric. Don't be throwing linen drapes into your home washer if you are at all worried about shrinkage. You just really want to make some time to take care of those things. All right, so what kind of fits into this category? I want you to clean your textiles draperies, pillow covers, that's a big one. If they're delicate at all, they might need to be dry cleaned, but a lot of those you can just like delicate cycle wash and hang dry at home. Blankets, most blankets do need to be washed fairly regularly. Think about it, you're like laying your face on it, your dog's butt's been laying on it. You definitely wanna give that a little freshening up. Changing out the textiles too from, you know, you might have a spring set of lighter items from uh, fall and winter set of darker items. So now's a great time to make that swap to brighten your space if that's something that interests you. Laundering your home linens sounds so basic, but when's the last time you truly he did that. <laughs> And while we're on the topic of window treatments, don't forget to vacuum things like blinds, lampshades need vacuuming from time to time, getting up on a ladder and dusting your actual curtain rods because yes, they do accumulate some dust up there from time to time. It's a great little free, quick Saturday afternoon thing that you could do and it'll make your space feel so much fresher. Last, certainly not least, edit your styling with your design style in mind. Interior design styles got you confused 
everybody gets confused. It gets super overwhelming. There's hundreds, if not thousands of styles over many different decades, generations, different times of history, and it's a lot. So check out this video for my simple framework for understanding the basic history of interior design and my unique method to help you find your style. I'll leave the video right down here. So I'll see you in that next one. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe, hit that little notification bell. It helps me out so much. Bye, my friends.